a monthly seminar series second wednesday every month since 14th october 2020 20 plus speakers presented on cobotics are collaborating partners ihfc bird cognitive science program a department of humanities and social sciences I have foundation for robotics technology innovation hub of IIT Delhi a national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems by DST Department of Science and Technology Government of India in March 2020 a section 8 company I have foundation for robotics IHFC was incorporated on June 13 2020 about ihfc advances in sensing computation and autonomy are enabling robots and autonomous systems enter real world domain such as manufacturing defense medical agriculture etc where machines must work alongside and interact with humans we are entering an era of man an unmanned team where humans and robotic systems must work together towards common goals the four verticals of ihfc medical agriculture industry and defense our goals human robot collaboration for enhancing human capability and reducing risk and improving productivity our objectives research on novel technology areas of robotics and automation science development of products for benefit of society inculcation of startups and promoting entrepreneurship in india our cq concept collaborate commercialize from research to product the grand projects of ihfc medical simulator human robot interaction control rehabilitation robotics drone applications healthcare robotics human robot interaction intelligence intelligent sensing and secure communication and industry 4.0 bird a center of excellence at iit delhi about bird biologically inspired robots and drones The Center of Excellence on Bird Biologically Inspired Robots and Drones at IIT Delhi is an evolution from its humble research activities which began a few decades ago by its faculty drawn from the Department of Mechanical, Electrical and Computer Science Engineering. Bird has 10 plus projects industrial and academic 27 plus members including faculty students and technical staff across various departments of IIT Delhi 150 plus publication in international and national conference and journals 9 years of experience cognitive science program a department of humanities and social sciences at IIT Delhi Cognitive Science Group at IIT Delhi is to create a knowledge pool that can address relevant problems under the ambit of human cognition both for India and the world at large. It helps students acquire a strong background in theoretical frameworks and empirical approaches of one or more areas of cognitive science. Cognitive science is an emerging new field of study 
that endeavors to study the mind from multiple perspectives and disciplines by combining ideas, principles, and methods from psychology, linguistics, philosophy, computer science, and neuroscience. This knowledge is applied for developing a better understanding of how our minds, brains work while creating better products, tools, services, and policies. Cobotox, leading the way in the human robot collaboration space. IHFC. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as a matter of fact, I think uh, this is just the right opportunity because what we have uh, today a fantastic speaker. Uh, who is going to actually be talking exactly how Kubotox works and robotics works and how robot and you know humans can interact and coexist peacefully together? He, in fact, our today's speaker is uh, a very, very, very dynamic and a very young gentleman and an ex uh, alumni of IIT Delhi. Uh, he's Mr. Rishabh Agarwal, who is the CEO of uh, Pure Robotics.ai. He has a background in research in the area of human robot collaboration, which of course is what Cobotic stands for. Rishabh is an MTech from UMD College Park in Systems Engineering and BTech from IIT Delhi with an interdisciplinary so specialization in robotics. Uh, so today, Rishabh, as a matter of fact, I was uh, listening to his um, podcast. I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to listen to his podcast, which uh, IHFC has very proudly showcased under the seminar section under him as today's speakers. In fact, a lot of his achievements, his uh, uh, press releases, his press uh, exposures, uh, along with his uh, very, very, very interesting uh, uh, talk is actually uh, recorded over there and one can go and listen. And uh, I like the way he starts a uh, uh, very, very interesting, uh, his podcast is a very interesting line that robots are stupid. So, and it is man which makes them intelligent. At the end, they are machines and we are the ones who actually uh, make them intelligent and without uh, a very, very good collaboration between a man and machine, they cannot be a proper and seamless uh, robotic structure. And so that is, and, and, and that's how he sees Industry 4.0, and that's how he sees uh, the SMEs also adopting uh, this whole uh, robotics culture in the future. And, um, you know, today he actually is uh, going to be covering a very interesting uh, topic. He's going to be covering the role of human robot interaction to enable automation in SME, because he feels the SME has uh, has been a little left out in the game of industry 4.0 in, in uh, the revolution industry 4.0 or even automation discussion, not, not because of its value, but for them, they have also struggled to adopt the same in a cost effective manner. And uh, basically he wants to talk about how the new generation of solutions are going to enable humans and robots to collaborate and change for the same. So I think it's a very, very apt topic that uh, Mr. Rishabh has uh, chosen. He's young, he is one of us, he's one of you. So he's going to be sharing with us over here his views, his journey, his experience, uh, how uh, this uh, Cobotox will exist and uh, in fact make this world a better place to live in. And uh, with that, I think I will hand over the platform to a very, very, very eminent speaker. Mr. Rishabh Agarwal, CEO of Pia Robotics. Rishabh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pia. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, really appreciate the warm welcome. Uh, it's the first time being on this side, especially communicating back to IIT Delhi. Uh, <clears throat> I did graduate from IIT Delhi, did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering, and over the four years I was part of the ecosystem, and I'm still part of the ecosystem, but actively working there. Uh, studying there. Um, I remember my entire four years were 
literally every single day i might have gone to the robotics club if not like i can miss some weekends but almost every single day i've been a part of the robotics club and everything i am doing right now or i'm planning on doing in future is connected and grounded in me by that culture of uh, kind of robotics that was incorporated in IIT Delhi, like professors, uh, students, um, co-workers, that we build these systems. That That is the prime reason why we exist. So with that, uh, I would like to start share my presentation and talk about what we are doing at Peer Robotics in general and uh, what do I feel that why there is this need of human robot collaborations for uh, small to medium scale manufacturing. So. I hope everyone can see my screen. Uh, Pia, can you confirm? Yes, I can very clearly see your screen. Perfect. So yeah, today's talk, the title is Role of Human Robot Interaction to Enable Automation Across SMEs, which are like small to medium scale manufacturings. Uh, going a bit further, like I come from SME. Uh, my family has manufacturing units in India and Rajasthan. I grew up watching my dad, my uncles, like literally working day and night into their small factories making things and making sure that you know they deliver and they deliver good products whether it's automotive whether it's packaging whether it's different industries but everyone did their best now as i grew up i definitely realized that it's not that they don't want to make their lives easier they definitely want to make their lives easier they don't want to do that same hard work which is non-value add again and again but for them, the challenges, challenge had been, and it still is how to incorporate those new technologies because they are operating in their silos and they don't have resources and support to incorporate those technologies. So with that, like that was the prime reason why I focused on these areas and especially for small and medium scale enterprises because it comes home for me, right? Um, but let's talk about why SMEs are critical. So first of all, we all know post COVID, has changed the world fundamentally from what it was becoming before that. Previously, there were some, some, some isolated countries that were becoming the hub for manufacturing and others being the consumer of those manufactured goods, right? So West was typically a consumer for manufactured good and China was probably making everything, right? So post-COVID, we realized that probably that's not a good idea. Like we can probably make things cheaper on that side, but that doesn't mean that when we actually need those materials or those stuff, we can get them on time and on requirement. And that was a big bottleneck. That created an area where during COVID, people realized that manufacturing has to be locally. It has to come home. It has to be close to them. And with that, like fundamentally, every country or every state, even state level, started incorporating those changes. Like right now, there are several government initiatives that are in place to ensure that people manufacturing back in their own country where the things are consumed. We all know about programs like Make in India. You might also be aware that US has a similar program which is Made in America. And all these programs promote, support, and provide fundings to manufacturers that want to again bring manufacturing back to their local countries. And being close to customers and markets enable a lean manufacturing supply chain. And in fact, this was something that industries uh, did long time back. Like if you remember, the reason why Gurgaon exists, and I sometimes joke about it, like is because of Maruti Suzuki, right? So they started making their cars, they brought all their suppliers in that nearby area, and it became kind of like a hub. So people now are thinking that we should manufacture in that local zones, but we can also have certain small manufacturers providing the material locally to ensure that lean supply that we are now used to and we depend on. And this is a little bit on the US side. These numbers are uh, on the US geography, but it holds true even for countries like India and Japan, where we are talking about 11% contribution of entire GDP of America just by small to medium scale manufacturing. We're not even talking about software side. We're talking about just manufacturing and SME manufacturing having 11% contribution to the GDP of America. SMEs represent 98%, more than 98% of manufacturing in the country. So if we think about it, every 100 plants, like 98 plants are small to medium scale and they are not automating. They are, they're still stuck in their old ways on how they were operating before. And they're 
they're employing 16 million people in US alone. So it's not just that they're contributing to the GDP, but they are actually one of the majority of operational holders and they are one of the majority of people or employing organizations that are employing people and providing them livelihood. But now again, like in some geographies, they're facing with struggles and this might not be true for Indian economy, but this is happening across the West that if you talk about moving these manufacturings back to the state, how do you fill those jobs that are required? like massive labor shortages across US, across Europe. They are expected to be more than 20 million open jobs in US that are probably not going to be filled by 2030. There are more than 50% already jobs that are not being filled, like people are looking for right people, right talent. And uh, companies are saying that, or seven out of 10 companies are reporting that they are missing their scheduled production timelines because of these labor shortages. So definitely it's like a massive issue for countries. And from that, I wanted to bring our Andrew NG, like AI researcher, and we'll talk about AI and all also during this uh, talk a little bit, is that now use of robotics and automation in manufacturing is no longer a luxury. Like we are not talking about that, hey, you have robots, like it's nice, it's good to have, right? Like it, it, it shows that how rich this manufacturing is. That's no longer the case. It's a necessity. You can't operate, you can't bring the value unless you are able to automate and have that as core part of your manufacturing operations. So why, why people are not automating? Let's say SMEs have one of the least adoption of automation, but like less than 2% almost in certain cases, but why that is the case? Like why SMEs are not automating? It's not that they don't want to, they're facing the same struggles, but the challenge is if we talk about traditional robots that exist right now in the market that happens, they're rigid. They, first of all, they require someone to come and install the robot, program the robot, and then the robot will do just that task that is programmed on the robot again and again, right? So it's not just the robot that they're paying for, they're paying for all the accessories that are required to make the robot functional. They are paying for the time, deployment time, and all those programming timelines. Like it probably can range three months to six months in certain big projects. And it's a complex system. It's not just you go out and buy a robot on Amazon, right? That never happens, especially in manufacturing. Uh, but they have to pay for the software engineer that comes and program the robot. And guess what? Down the line, if you change something in your operations, you again rely on those uh, software engineers to come back and reprogram. Right, so these are making it so much bigger than what SMEs can absorb or can understand. For them, it's no longer the machine that they're just buying, but there's like plethora of other areas or other things that they would have to buy along with this robot. And since they don't have any experience working with it, they go with the mindset of that, okay, this is what I'm buying. But then as they go deeper and deeper, they realize that that's way bigger of a investment for them than what they imagined before. So in the end, if we have to summarize, it's cost and complexity that is the biggest barrier towards automation. It's not that the requirement is not there. Like right now, if we talk about it, China, we just overtook China as the biggest population, but let's say even till a year back, China bought more robots than the rest of the countries combined. So they had the most number of people as well, but they were still buying more robots than the rest of the uh, com uh, countries combined. And the reason was that they have been foreseeing that the age population, aging population, and different aspects of the jobs would require to be automated because as you elevate everyone's lifestyle, you want to give them tasks that are cognitive, that are challenging. You don't want anyone on the labor force to work towards the things that are non-value add. And so people are looking to automate, but the biggest barrier stands as cost and complexity as how, how would they do that? Like it's too expensive, it takes too long, and they don't have any knowledge behind how it might work out, right? And that's where we truly believe that human robot teams can change that. If we can enable people on the shop floor who are already doing their operations to teach a robot how to do that same operation that they've been doing, the robot can in fact assist the human on doing that repetitive task and human can focus on that cognitive task that requires the human's input. So when Pia said that I mentioned that aspect that robots are dumb, I still believe that 
we guide the robots on how to perform. We build them, right? Like now we can do a hard coded programming and say that's the only thing you will do. Or we can be a bit more smarter and we can bring humans in the loop and enable robots to learn from humans so that they can do the tasks that are repetitive, that are non value add, and humans can focus on their cognitive and value add things, right? And that we truly believe will open up the potential of SMEs. SMEs with these technologies where humans are a core part of their team or human robot interactions are core part of their operations can really enable the production systems, can increase the throughput, can produce more. And by the way, in this world, we are still at that stage where we need more stuff to be made. We are not talking about going in any time in the zone where we are talking about that, oh, maybe we can shut down some factories because we don't need these many cars or we don't need these many phones. We are still in that shortage area. So we still need to make more stuff, more life-saving stuff, more um, consumer stuff, but we need to empower SMEs to do that or to achieve that vision. So now just a background about myself, like that was all what we were thinking about. But in past, I worked on several technologies and this is one of the RoboMuse platforms that we build. And I know that this is probably still active in IIT Delhi. <clears throat> and what we are doing right now is also inspired and came out of that, right? So when I started working on human robot interaction, this was the first project that I ever did. It, it looks shabby right now. It's nowhere close to what we are building right now, but that is the first step that enabled us to understand, right? So here you can see a small robot that will project something and a camera that will detect the humans. And what we were trying to do is all the guidance or interactions that we do on the camp with the robot, the robot can understand that. It's a small game and again, Professor Saha, um, the mind behind this as well, we integrated these systems so that the kids can come along, play these games, and now these cameras can detect what they are trying to do and enable that game or play along with it, right? So this was the first time I built something where humans were part of the loop. They were not away. They were not isolated. Humans were interacting with the robots. Uh, move forward a couple of years, I did my master's in US, and that's where I started working on more I would say tangible stuff like uh, we were building tactile sensors that can enable manipulators to understand what kind of objects they are gripping and how they are moving around. So as a core researcher, we did the same thing. We played around with the robot and made a system that can flip the bottle. So you might have seen those videos, right? You grab a bottle and you flip it around. Now imagine, can a robot do it? No, like it's, it's too complex of a task, like as humans, we understand what we are picking, how we are moving, and in dynamic environment, we can operate. Robots can do that. And if we have to enable robots to learn from humans, we would have to give them certain set of skill sets that can help them understand what humans want. And this was another area where I worked on where we integrated and developed our own tactile sensors that was not uh, absolute sensor, it was relative sensor. Now, what that means is that these, these sensors would give data to the robot, not in terms of absolute value of how much weight you are pulling, but in that relative sense that if I'm starting to grab something and then move it around, how I have to change my force, how we operate as humans. So that was another area I worked on, we developed and come today, like at Peer Robotics, we are building the next generation of autonomous mobile robots, where our whole focus is how we can bring automation within reach for everyone not just to large manufacturers, but to small and medium scale enterprises. So our current platform, autonomous navigation, obstacle avoidance, but something that's completely different about Peer is our robots understand human haptics and can learn from it. So you can actually simply grab the robot, move it around. And in this process, the robot learns on how to do the task and can repeat it on its own right after that. So we can almost think of this evolution now, right? When we started, it was manual operation. Like there were trolleys, they were moving around stuff. Then large enterprises started bringing in some robots like AGVs, right? Like you will lay down these uh, magnetic tapes or your QR codes, and these robots will just follow those are certain aspects. But if you have to change something, again, you change the infrastructure. You change the literally the infrastructure on how the robots would be able to operate. Then came AMRs, which are like autonomous mobile robots, very, very more intelligent or like much more intelligent compared to AGVs. 
but still limited by the fact that someone would have to program them on how to do the task. And uh, what we believe is going to be the future is collaborative robots, cobots, which we already, uh, IHFC and all are working towards that direction. And we fundamentally believe in that direction is that these platforms who can learn from human. So now we are not talking about programming, but we are talking about learning. And that's the difference, like programming versus learning. We believe that the robots will be the platforms that will learn from humans. So, I mean, just to show you the robot and a quick video, as I said, you can simply grab the robot, make it move around on your shop floor. And on the right hand side, you can see that the robot learns how to move it in that environment, what path to follow, how to navigate in that space, where to start, where to stop, and it can do it on its own next time onwards. And that is completely autonomous system. And if tomorrow things change in the production line, we can reprogram them. So enabling that had always been one of the key challenges. So as you can see, how we learn and how we use that feedback is key. So as a human moves the robot, how that learning has been impacted or how that learning has been used is something that we have to work on, right? So in this particular example, you can see that as we are moving it, it's understanding all its direction, its movement in the physical environment, and we use that information again to repeat it on its own, right? So that, that part was just on how the robot was moving. But now let's say we have to take that learning and do much more with it, which is, let's say if I take the robot and move it on a aisle, I want the robot to learn that this is a preferred aisle or preferred path, that this is an aisle which I should take in a production line whenever I'm moving material from point A to point B. So you can do that. Like you can grab the robot again, move it on that aisle, and in this process, the robot recognizes that, okay, that's an aisle that is preferred for me. And whenever I have a new path or new destination, I'll plan my path from that aisle because that's what the humans taught me. And if you think about it, it's exactly what we do when we onboard new team members. We show them that how you do that task and we expect them to repeat that task autonomously next time onwards, right? And that's what we are doing. Like we are telling the robot to do those tasks and in making it easier for them to repeat it on its own. Now, another thing that we did is trolley movement solution here. So now here, it's a little bit more, we are going towards the industry side and we're seeing the applications and we are delivering solutions. So as you can see on the corner there, <laughs> the robot goes to that location where human taught the robot that you will find a trolley. It doesn't assumes that the trolley would be there 100% because humans can make a mistake. They can keep the trolley a little bit here and there. So robot stops a meter before it, uses its cameras and LIDARs to understand where the trolley is and corrects itself to achieve that accuracy. So this is a human robot team working together where robot is able to do that precision task that it requires to do based on its sensors. And the human can teach the robot on the cognitive aspect, which is a hey, point A, you will find a trolley, drop it to point B, and then in the production line C, you might find something else that you have to bring it to production line D. So that's where these teams can work together and enable automation that is seamless, that doesn't, that doesn't require changing a lot of things from the user side. And finally, other solution that we have done is also bin movement, where robot can autonomously go to a station, pick up the bin, dispatch it into a production line, bring the empty one. But in all of this, as we do that, what we are also doing is actually enabling these SMEs or small manufacturers to hire much more or hire much more talent. Like simply they can hire better because now they are the ones who are playing with technologies and who are showcasing technologies and who are using technologies that are state of the art. So, I mean, we all like as an engineer, I can come back and say that when I was graduating or when I was graduating from a master's, I wanted to work for a company that is innovative. We all want to, right? We all want to learn in our careers, grow in our careers. So even for people who are going in the manufacturing space, they want to figure out where they want to work, right? There is a large enterprise that can pay them much more and probably they can grow much higher in that large enterprise. And there's a small manufacturer, which is like a local manufacturer, mom and pop shop, right? Like 50 people max. So how are you going to grow there? But now with the automation being a core part of SMEs, they can attract talent that was not available to them before because now suddenly a pool of people, Gen Zs or 
millennials like us like can come back and say that hey this is something i like and this is the platform i've been given which was not available to me anywhere else like i can work on these platforms i can do my stuff much better with these robots it's like using chat gpt and other ai tools to make us better not to replace us to make us better and that's where we see robotics would also enable smes to do both of this first of all automate their existing operations plus also attract talent because now they can see that these companies are using those tools to make their lives easier so in the end it's a short talk and uh, would be more interactive and would love to answer more things but we truly believe at peer robotics and our entire team that we want to create a world where robots can handle the ordinary so that humans can do the extraordinary and that's where the success for humans and robots lie it's to work together and do things that were not possible before individually so that's it thank you everyone appreciate the time thank you thank you so much that was i mean most of it considering the fact that i'm not from science background or engineering background a little bit, little bit went over my head but it is i'm sure the ones who are engineers here loved it and i'm sure they understood everything that you said but whatever little little i understood it seemed very interesting and very apt and uh, if implemented i'm sure uh, if people really think about it deeply i'm sure it's going to go a long way so i would uh, in fact uh, i don't know if you uh, did manage to read a little bit about uh, uh, ihfc uh, and uh, you know what professor sa i don't know if professor sa has been able to join us today he was taking some viva that's what he uh, <laughs> that's what he said so uh, is professor sa with us i don't think so no oh, he's no no he's not he has not joined yet He has not been able to join in on the end. And what about Ashutosh? Has he has he been able to join in? Uh, not really. Okay. So, um, as you I know, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Professor Sah has joined. Uh, I can Professor see. Professor Sah has joined. Yes, yes. Professor Sah, can we have you unmuted and you say a few words about your student and the one who's uh, been talking very highly of you? Are you there? He's joined, but he's not responding. Uh, Pia ji, Akash here from IHFC Vishwakarma Bhavan. Hi, Akash. How are you? Great, great. You know, uh, Rishabh, it was inspiring. You know, the way you are leading a deep tech startup. You know, and also the aspect of human robot interaction, empowering, augmenting. Akash, your SM face is hidden. Can you? Can you come a little towards the camera? Yeah, now we can see you. Now oh, we were seeing half you. of you. Okay. No, no, no. The half of it was, you know, uh, the robot. You know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, Rishabh, great to see. You know, great to see, see peer robotics. You know, crossing the Atlantic or the Pacific on that side of the world. You know, championing deep tech startups and Indian deep tech startups out of IIT Delhi. Uh, I think you know the message of peer robotics. augmenting and empowering the normal smes i think we it is powerful uh, we uh, we have already entered i mean in those statistics are also startling ki bhai china sabse zyada matlab jitni baaki duniya bhi nahi khareed rahi usse bhi zyada robots use kar raha hai le raha hai and you know so i think we were uh, really impressed by the advancement of robotics you know and also with the ai coming the autonomy coming in Uh, i think there were several things which we should keep an eye on uh, we want it or not you know sometimes it happens the evolution of technology takes us to new areas so down the line you know some the steam engines came airplanes came now drones and you know your robots are knocking on the door maybe they will become a part of our you know our normal existence and i just we just wanted to acknowledge you on behalf of ihfc and our education research and training team we are joined by our specialized resource persons and uh, trainers who are implementing coding as well as robotics and automation as a syllabus in schools so we will keep always you know we give peer robotics as an example at least i give in my talks that it is one of those startups who is into the area of human robots and 
I think Sri Krishna conveyed a message that sir, I, I cannot attend. He is in Pragati Medan for a National Tech Day demonstration. Toto, telepresence yes. robots. Oh, yes, yes, tomorrow. Yes. So he very yeah. much wanted to attend this the session. Prime Minister but is visiting tomorrow. Right. So again, we look up to you and rise and shine, shine bright. That's the message from IHFC. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate Akash and you're absolutely right. Uh, one thing I believe is that not if the cobots will be part of our ecosystem, it is when. And the idea is that how we can move towards it and make sure that India leads this area globally. Right. So we are the forerunners. We want to be the forerunners because we have the talent both in terms of um, software developers, uh, phenomenal kind of coding platforms like my co-founders Alok. Uh, I think one of the best programmers I've met in my life, best developers I've met in my life. And these are the people who can develop these systems that are way better than what exists right now. So if given the right platform to these students, I think we can do wonders. And uh, Pierre is trying to do their part and love to be part of the ecosystem and however we can support and grow it. Yeah. So thank you. Thank okay. you for the so, platform. Because you have offered, I am asking, uh, just yes. PRG, one more thing, because Rishab has offered, I am asking, I am soliciting, and uh, but it is a give and take, Rishab. So yes. Uh, yes. IHFC is the knowledge partner for uh, Delhi Robotics League, which is a student mm. level mobile robotics competition. Uh, mm. We are looking for partners, enablers, collaborators, sponsors. So, I mean, we will pass this message to you. Please do review this. This competition is down the line. We would also like you, like PR Robotics, to be one of the judges there. So if you can come down or, you know, some of your team members can be a part of that event, we will be appreciating that. And also as a give back, my brother is a mentor for uh, first tech challenge in US in Austin. So okay. I will also ask him to look into peer robotics for their team. You know, they may come to you for uh, some oh, asks. You know? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, uh, I, Pia knows already, like I, I have a strong background in Robocon. So yeah. I participated in almost four years of Robocon and this year from peer side, we would love to be one of the sponsors for that part as well. And it's our way to give back and see how we can grow this community, right? And definitely yeah. love to connect and first robotics as well. I had a chance to mentor the team when I was part of the US ecosystem. So definitely great to be a part. <laughs> okay, thank brilliant, you. Brilliant, Rikab. So now we have you for DG Robocon as well as for Robocarcha, <laughs> so the DRL. So I'm sure uh, uh, it's going to be an association that's going to go a long way. Uh, we really Absolutely. appreciate your support on the same. Uh, in fact, um, uh, as I was saying that Professor Sai is not there, but I would like to take a few moments. I don't know if you've had a chance to uh, understand what IHFC is all about. So if we could have Nitika uh, play our uh, five minutes, uh, the little bit of a video for everybody to understand where we come from. Nitika, are we ready with that video that for you to play? Yes, yes, I'll just share it. Okay, great. In fact, Richard, you'll find lots of things that they are saying very apt to what you said and what you feel. Dr. Vineet Vashist has a question. See, everything is going to change. You know, whatever you look around yourself, I think everything will change. All these technologies, they are going to be very, very significant in our life. We envision that we are going to use robotics and humans and the human robotic interface for improvement of society. That our focus should be human robot interactions. Human robot interaction means that human intelligence with the robot's decision. We are called cobotics. Cobotics means collaborative robotics, where human beings and robots work together. We work in on technologies of the future. We look at ways in which these technologies will actually get deployed. We provide leadership in this. We work with industry. So we have chosen four major first ideas you may call it. One is called the medical robotics. The second is the defense robotics. Third is the agriculture robotics. And fourth is the industry 4.0. Or is the video not no. visible? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's breaking. Nitika, can you just 
play it again for our audience yeah i think it break people are saying it's not visible or it's one can't see oh okay i'll just also breaking it. pausing okay i'll reshare it and in the meanwhile if anybody has any questions for risha please start putting them up in the chat box unko dikh raha hai ab should i play from the beginning uh, yes, yes i please, think it's please. better to play from the beginning oh, and finally. guys please put put forward your questions in the chat box i think uh, professor vineet dr vineet has a question as well oh professor saha has joined Hi everyone. Ashutosh has joined. Professor. I am not a little late in joining. Quite late actually. I have a question if I am allowed to. Sir, sir, you are allowed five questions, not one. Acha. <laughs> so how much how much profit Pierre Robertis made in 22, 23? That's <laughs> so we are still not making profits. Uh, we did make sales. So now we are at five robots a quarter sale, um, okay. which roughly comes down to almost 150k to 200k. But uh, we are growing fast, and hopefully by the end of this year we'll be at the or early next year we'll be at the profitable stage as well. <laughs> Thank you. Good. All the best. All the best. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I think uh, Akash has another question. Or should we play the video? Akash, are you asking a question? Should we play the video? Hi, Rishabh. How are you? This is Venkat. Hi, oh, hi, Venk Dr. Venkat. How are you doing? Good to see I'm you. Fine. Long time. Yes, yes. After a long time. <laughs> yeah. So, how are things going on? Things are good. Yeah, growing peer. Now uh, we are based out of two countries. So we have one yes, office yes. in US, New Haven, and another one in Gurgaon. Yeah. That's great. So <laughs> nice to see you here. so one question quick question uh, is that uh, which version of robomus is going on <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the fourth one so we took up the fourth one and uh, we would like to host you now i mentioned professor sa as well and would loud like to host the entire team to come and see this robot this by the way we also got c certified recently so now our That's product it. is a c certified product and yeah it all started from that fourth version right like we changed a lot of things changed and you will see that manufacturing wise and all our team did a phenomenal job i think it was the core part when i left the i stopped doing a lot more technical things we got better so i think that was the key there <laughs> but yeah so, uh, yeah i will i will definitely come not alone but with a big team yeah, yeah. a team of We're around 400 a, a team of around 400 students will <laughs> will discuss that We will have to figure out logistically, but yes. Yes, we'll definitely. We will we'll plan this. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor Vineet has a question. Doctor Vineet Vashish. Ah, yes. 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 
all these technologies they are going to be very very significant in our life we envision that we are going to use robotics and humans and the human robotic interface for improvement of society that our focus should be human robot interactions human robot interaction means that human intelligence with the robot's decision we are called cobotics cobotics means collaborative robotics where human beings and robot work together we work in on technologies of the future we look at ways in which these technologies will actually get deployed we provide leadership in this we work with industry so we have chosen four major thrust ideas we may call it one is called the medical robotics the second is the defense robotics third is the agriculture robotics and fourth is the industry 4.0 or industry 5.0 we are trying to build uh, an ecosystem here you know, when we talk about ecosystem it starts from uh, the kind of research capabilities that we are able to build how is that we are able to instill the uh, you know sense of commercialization in all those activities we should talk about you know how is that research getting translated into products so i think we want to be that ecosystem we want to be that enabler which is making that possible we've also got a large number of research projects and technology de development we are also creating some common infrastructure for instance in the area of medical simulation in the area of drones which can be used by a whole group so that we are trying to create an innovation ecosystem in the field of robotics some of the research for example prosthetic hands done by tejpur university the professor tells that it is undergoing a field trials with the doctor so that's a kind of a positive that it is reaching towards the market coming to the startup funding uh, we are very happy that uh, one of the startup companies from iit delhi botlab dynamics whom we funded last year they could show 1000 drone swarming on 29th of january last year which made the country fourth in the world so that's a pride on us because we have been contributing to that part you know what an industry can offer an academy can't what an academy can offer industry can't if we all come together that's that's the real value proposition for a startup i think that, that is what we are trying to build through a collaboration the mission of ihfc and the mission of iit delhi there's a lot of synergy and so we are treating ihfc as an extension of the things that we anyway want to do uh, so we've been supportive in terms of our students our researchers our uh, admin and our infrastructure uh, we also have our uh, faculty members writing proposals and so some of the projects done by ihfc are actually uh, implemented in our institute so we would like to see it uh, as a global company and when i say a global company it is a research aggregator you know the way we have structured ourselves when we talk about dtp or mcc or ready program these are some of the initiatives uh, you know when we are talking about students uh, who have uh, an intention to work in the domain of research and development they need to be supported they have still not made up their mind as to you know if they are going to start a job they are going to start a startup they are going to work a little bit more in terms of you know whatever they are passionate about we want to give them a platform and that is what ready is all about then we are creating two specialized centers which we call medical cobotic center it will be done in collaboration with iit delhi the second one is the drone technology park and the reason we have selected sony perth is that it is away from this red zone so it's an easy place to test it's a easy place to you know bring everyone together so we want to create an ecosystem for testing manufacturing you know research and development startups incubation uh, training all these put together in that space the first thing is first goal of success would be creating an impact in society through some value add in terms of uh, technologies and ideas uh, i would definitely want ihfc to make an impact you know an impact wherein we see our ecosystem coming together to see that we as an entity we as a country we as an ecosystem are able to build products on our own and that is what uh, you know we want to do as a part of ihfc thank you thank you nitika 
uh, I hope Rishabh that gave you some idea as to where we come from, what IHFC does, what IHFC's ethos is, vision is, mission is, and uh, as you can see, uh, Professor Sa is spearheading this uh, and very strongly backed by Ashutosh and his team, which is of course me and Akash and many other people who are already on this call and otherwise. So uh, it's great to be associated. And uh, if we have any questions, you can raise your hands for Rishabh or for any of us, you can raise your hands or ask the question in the chat box. Do we have any questions? No, I think we are lucky. We are being spared uh, with no questions. Oh, no, I think uh, Mr. Bikram has uh, a question I just saw. Uh, OK, what he's asking is, what are the key considerations and safety measures that small and medium sized enterprises SMEs should prioritize to ensure the well-being of human workers collaborating with cobots in the workplace? Very interesting question. Absolutely. I think uh, this is the point from which we start building automation. Like, I think that's the base which all the robotic systems or any automation systems already has or needs to make sure that that's robust. So to give you an example, when we talk about some of our platforms, uh, safety is the base level layer on which other platforms or other solutions are built. So in case, let's say if the robot is moving and someone jumps in front of the robot as well, right? Like jumps it from whether the distance or something, the robot has those quick stop functionalities that our team has built that immediately stops the platform and, you know, make sure that the human is safe first and foremost and go around. As I said, we also understand human haptics. So even if the person is doing or the robot is going somewhere and the user wants to take control of it, they can instantly apply a force on the platform when the robot recognizes it and converts to kind of like a manual operation where the human is the um, guiding force now or human is the controller now. So we always, whenever in an area where humans and robots are collaborating, we always take a human first approach where if there is an interaction, we tend to go towards the direction that what human wants react onto that and then go towards the aspects of the operation. So operation comes second, human safety comes the first. So, and it's important for not just our solutions, for any solution that are working with humans in the same zone, it's very critical. Yeah. Excellent. Sensors very, and all, very, I mean, yeah. Very well articulated. Uh, any more questions you can ask or you raise your hand? Bikram says thank. Anybody else? Okay, I think uh, anybody else if no questions, then maybe we could uh, uh, call today. Nidika, do we have our Springer voucher ready? Yes. Can you just show that? So um, as a thank you, uh, we, we want to extend a gratitude for Green to be a speaker for Kobo Talks today. And I would uh, invite Ashutosh, uh, our CEO. Ashutosh, are you still there? OK, I think he's not there. Is Professor Saha still there? OK, that leaves you to me. <laughs> I, <laughs> so it looks like you're stuck with me, Rishabh. So uh, I would like to thank you and extend uh, a show of appreciation for this time taken out to explain this wonderful concept of uh, how human robot collaboration can exist in SMEs. So for that, we would like to gift you a Springer voucher of 150 euros, uh, which you can use uh, for buying books. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure they're books that you've been trying to buy or have bought, but are still yet to read or planning to read. So please go ahead and add some more to your kitty. Uh, no, really appreciate it. Yeah, and I team would be definitely happy. I think there are certain books that they're in, you know, looking for. So it's going to be important. <laughs> Excellent. You have the, here's your chance. So just go and grab them. So then we'll be sending you uh, the voucher uh, for you to uh, claim your uh, prize of 150 euros for the books against those Springer books. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you once again. 
and express our gratitude. I look forward to meeting you in person very soon. And anytime in IITD, you're more than welcome to please come and meet us at RNI Park and have a cup of coffee with us. Oh, actually, Absolutely. I think Professor Sa is back. Professor Sa, would you like to say, we were just going to wind up the session. Would you like to say a few kind words to uh, Richard? But actually no he's our no, our our home home coming kind of things right <laughs> so thanks for you know uh, coming and sharing your thoughts so thank you again ashutosh tum bhi kuch bologe i'll i'll speak with him when we meet uh, in, <laughs> uh, in any case thanks yeah. a lot Shitab, and uh, i think it'll be good if you keep on coming back on this platform as well mm -hmm. because we have this cloud which is growing very very fast mm -hmm. Uh, this ecosystem that we are trying to build up here. Mm -hmm. And I think we need people uh, like you who have been working in this particular domain very passionately mm -hmm. to speak so that people get encouraged and get you know motivated to work in this domain. Sorry, we joined late because we had a BOD meeting uh, with the director and it dragged two hours instead of one hour. So sorry for it. But anyway, so we know you. We can ask you again to repeat the, uh, the slides whenever needed. Thank you. Really, really appreciate thank Professor Sai and Ashutosh. Like, well, yeah. definitely. And I think it's a good platform. And thank you for inviting us to the right. platform. And in future, I would love to have our team as well to come and present on different aspects that they've been working on. So thank you. Yes, good because good. peers get inspired by their own peer group. So that's why it's <laughs> always wonderful to have you back. All right. Bye-bye. So, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take, Take care. care. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank See you. you. Bye. <laughs>